President, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Stephen, for that interesting tribute to the lasses and the debts. And as a teacher, I might give you a gold star for effort. <laughs> but being complimented by Stephen is like, like the hangman telling you that you've got a pretty neck. <laughs> This evening, Stephen seems to know a great deal about ladies and their brass. And mind you, they say that a man is only truly eloquent when he can describe Dolly Parton without using his hands. <laughs> <laughs> now you might be wondering why the reply to the lassies is always at the end of the evening. Well, the answer is simple. Women always have to have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> you heard Alan say that he feels a bit of an imposter this evening. Well, me too. We know that Browns enjoyed the company of women. His famous love affairs and the hundreds of poems and songs that they inspired. And if you are called Anna, Alison, Katie, Mary, Jeannie, Cloris, Clarinda, Nancy Nell, Molly, Polly, Peggy, Bessie, Jessie, <laughs> Eliza, Maria, Delia, there's a poem or a song about you. <laughs> but he left me out. So why am I here? Oh, Grace, as written by Burns, is just merely the precursor to Haggis, Meeps, and Tatties. <laughs> <laughs> but the band Beautiful South wrote the song for whoever, mentioning Jennifer, Alison, Bella Batsu, Deborah, Anna Bertu, and then continued with the line, I love to write about each wrinkle on your face. Perfect line to write with, Grace, but no. <laughs> continued with, I love you until my fountain pen runs dry. However, Louis Capaldi wrote a song for Grace. We've been falling into Grace by the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Ooh, ooh, ooh Miss Grace by the Titans. And of course, Amazing Grace. But Ravi missed me out. We all know that Robert Burns in many ways was a lad typical of his time. He was born and lived his life during the latter half of the 18th century. A time when women couldn't vote and were rarely, if ever, formally educated. Gender roles were strictly prescribed. What I mean by that is that women of the working class were given no formal education, or taught how, but taught how to run a house and how to look after the family. The gender roles were strictly, sorry, the tasks were divided by gender completely, to the extent that the women milked the crews and the men mucked out the buyer. The women of the higher classes would have learned literacy and maybe a language or even a musical instrument, but the expectation was the same. You get married, you have the weeds. As I said, Burns was a lad typical of his time. <coughs> or is he just a typical lad of any time? <coughs> Our world today is still dominated by men. Have you ever noticed that we suffer from mental anxiety, menstrual pain, mental breakdown, menopause? All start with men. <laughs> and then we have these problems. It's a hysterectomy, a book by a gynecologist. <laughs> the work of firms may be seen as the result of riotous living. Socialising with women in an era before birth control, pondering about humanity, poetry and song about the immediate environment and all aspects of the human condition. Burns' work can be categorised into four universal themes. Romance, brotherhood, food and drink, and nature. The significance of these themes in every bit as real and raw today as they were over 200 years ago. Different poems by Burns depict the varying attitudes to women. Willie Wassey, we've heard a little bit about it. It is an unsuitably named poem because it's really about Willie 
Russell's wife, and it's highly complimentary to women. So here's a wee bit more. Sick a life as well I had. I would be here if I had her. She has an E, she has an E. The cat has torn the very collar. Five rusty teeth for by a stump. A clock tongue <coughs> to even another. A whisking beard of Luna Moon. Her nose and chin, they threaten another. Sick a life as well I had. I would be here if I had her. She's my cock, she's hen shinned. A lumpen leg, a hand made shorter. She's twisted right, she's twisted left, to balance fair and ill and quarter. She has a hump upon her breast, the twin of that upon her shoulder. Sick of wife as well I had, I wouldn't be a bit for her. This bounds is a far cry from the adorer of women <coughs> the world recognises. He's so disrespectful. He's taking no prisoners in mocking her appearance. Contrast this with the rights of women. Robert Burns was a great believer in the rights of women and held us rightly so to be socially and intellectually as equals. But these rights are not equal pay, nor opportunities, nor the right to vote, <coughs> nor the right to protection, to decorum and adoration. An improvement from Willie Russell, but a stark contrast from the women of today who are intelligent, who are practical and logical. But if Burns thought that we were equal in the 18th century, <coughs> what was it nowadays that women still have to do the same thing twice as well to be considered half as good? Everybody knows that Fred is still <coughs> a great dancer, but what about Ginger Rogers? She did everything that he did, but she did it backwards, wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> so let's consider these thoughts in the terms of today's Burns movement. In this week's BBC website, the Senior Vice President of my own club, the Cunet Burns Club, the Mother Club, Isabel Glind, recalls that in her last year of office as the President, in 1996, that time she says, I was not invited to meetings with other clubs, which means that our club was not represented at these meetings. They wouldn't have us there because I was a woman as president. And the article goes on to say, change is happening. But what has really changed in men's behaviour towards, towards us lassies from Robert Burns' time? Well, change is gradual. More and more clubs are becoming inclusive to all and moving with the times. But despite their vices, despite their immorality, all the troubles that we, they heap upon us, we continue to love them, these men. We love them for all the little things that a man can be loved for. Let's face it, ladies, some of us can love very little things. <laughs> My daughter's a nurse, and before she started on her career, we went for a behind-the-scenes tour around the hospital. And while we were in the pathology lab, we saw two brains in specimen jars. One was large and very healthy looking, and the other one was really small and shriveled. But the label showed that the brains were exactly the same age. The pathologist explained to us that the male brain was the bigger, and that's because it had never been used. Burns <laughs> <laughs> agreed that we lassies were the finished article, while the men were nature's guinea pigs. Old nature swears the lovely tears, her noblest work she classes with. A friend's hand she tried on mine, and then she made the lassies roll. How resplendent do the men look in their kilts this evening? We heard about the guilt. It is a symbol of love and power, but do we ladies agree that the kilt is an aphrodisiac? <laughs> the modern kilt was introduced by Sir Walter Scott for George IV's visit to Scotland in 1822. In 2010, the kilt was voted the world's favourite traditional item of clothing, 
and in 2024, 20, we still love it. Just think, ladies, of Sam Hewn in Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> Americans tell you that if you want to identify tartans, it's easy. You just look under the hilt. If it's a water powder, it's a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> best led to the imagination. <laughs> but our rabbi didn't wear a kilt. He wore breeches, and that didn't stop him from being a ladies man and having his own way with a number of them. He's a romantic rogue. Quite good looking, charming, great company. I have to say, I wonder what would happen if I had lived during that time. I think I would have been very glad to be one of his lassies. I'm sure I would have said, Oh, whistle and I'll come to you, my lad. Oh, whistle and I'll come to you, my lad. Oh, favour and favour and all oh, should be mad. Oh, whistle and I'll come to you, my lad. So there might have been a boy named after me as well. <laughs> but Rabbi was all his time and he raises difficult questions. Can you imagine if he looked now? He'd surely be all over social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. And as for having to swipe left or right for love, oh, before you do that, remember Rabbi's wise words. Or would some power the gift he sees to see ourselves as others see us? But beware the symptoms of love. The quickening of the pulse, the shortness of breath, the reddening of the cheeks. It's exactly the same symptoms as the symptoms of carbon dioxide poisoning. Instead of buying them, ladies, get your boiler checked. <laughs> there are four rings in marriage the engagement ring, oh, the wedding ring, the eternity ring, and the suffering ring. <laughs>
Gracias.